Uh, Colin Coward says the 49ers are the next Cowboys after they pay Purdy. So no matter how big a company or an industry is, it's always led by two or three things. Even at this company, not everything makes big money. Fox News, Tubi drives a lot of revenue. The S&P 500 last year, 2023, the S&P 500, all those companies, 75% of the returns were seven companies last year. Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Tesla has since tanked. That's it. 75% of the returns on some tech companies. Everybody else bleeding, plateauing, not doing well. All companies are led by two or three things. And that brings me to the 49ers, who, according to their owner, are going now to pay Brock Purdy and give him a, quote, massive extension. It's what the market is. What's Brock Purdy's market? The Niners are at a very fragile point, and I'm not sure they understand it. The fact that Brock Purdy is cheap slash free allows a stacked roster, and they've missed badly on enough draft picks. They're actually perilously thin. Trey Lance, whiff. Javon Kinlaw, whiff. A couple of third-round running backs, whiff, whiff. Danny Gray, wide receiver, whiff. Outside of left tackle, Trent Williams. It's not a very good offensive line. They've missed on too many. They're becoming very much the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys, about six, seven years ago, before they paid Dak the big money, you had that feeling, right? Ooh, it looks special. Super Bowl team. But once they paid a good quarterback great money, the Cowboys are no longer Super Bowl viable. It's all fool's gold. They had to let go of a Dalton Schultz and Amari Cooper. Dallas got thin in spots and one or two injuries, and it all came crumbling down. This 49er machine, just like the S&P 500, is driven by three things. Kyle Shanahan's scheme. Brock Purdy's free. And Christian McCaffrey is dominant. And if you think it's about defense, the Niners' defense gets carved up by good offenses. It's not the defense. It's not the defense that leads them. It's getting older, and there's holes. Kyle Shanahan has won 75% of his games with Christian McCaffrey. He's under 500 without Christian McCaffrey. And how long can you give this kid two and 300 touches? I'm not saying if you pay Brock Purdy, it's going to come tumbling down like a Jenga game, but it's going to look a lot like the Cowboys. Very, very thin. And about the time January hits, you don't really match up with a Kansas City, a Baltimore, a Buffalo, maybe a Detroit and a Green Bay going forward. You don't quite have the pieces. You know, you lost that one receiver. Your tight end's banged up. Trent Williams can't play. That's the Cowboys. Three or four great players and really, really thin after that. Essentially, Brock Purdy is like free shipping for Amazon. It makes the model work. You double and triple that Amazon shipping, their stock ends up probably looking more like Tesla. Every major business, they call it the Magnificent Seven, the S&P 500 are a big chunk of our economy, seven companies. And they don't always hit year after year after year. Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Tesla's in the tank. Just a handful drive even the biggest machines. Brock Purdy being free is a big driver of that. Do you agree? I mean, Coward loves the sky is falling narratives. He just he builds up on the sky is falling. But what do you think? If the Niners give Purdy $50 million, are they going to slide into becoming the Dallas Cowboys that are, that are good but not good enough? This is always the issue that teams run into when you pay quarterbacks big time dollars. And that's why teams have really tried to follow that Carson Wentz Eagles model 
the Joe Burrow Bengals model. And that's what the Niners are literally doing right now with Brock Purdy. They're really trying to capitalize on winning a Super Bowl as that quarterback is on their rookie deal because then you can afford to have a roster like the Niners, which is the most talented in the NFL. You can afford to have a really good team with the Cincinnati Bengals and have those good surrounding pieces. The Houston Texans are following that model right now where they're giving Daniil Hunter a two-year deal worth $49 million, and they're spending all over the place in free agency on short-term contracts worth a lot of money. Why? Because they understand that they have flexibility. C.J. Stroud is going into year two. They can exercise that fifth-year option. That's four more years of team control. Then you backload that contract extension for C.J. Stroud, and you can continue to be a Super Bowl contender over the next several years. And for the Niners and Brock Purdy here, He's been literally the best bargain deal in the NFL, making $900,000 this past year for the production that he gave them, where statistically he was a top five, top 10 quarterback in every category. And he led you to the Super Bowl and you're paying him less than a million dollars. Now he's going to try to make up for that lack of pay in cashing in on this new deal. And a lot of people are like, you think Brock Purdy would take a hometown discount? I don't think so. Nor should he even go to a point where he's even thinking about that because he's earned this new deal. But you look at the top 10 quarterbacks in the league right now, and then you also look at the teams, right, and how they're built. Joe Burrow is making $55 million. Justin Herbert, 52 and a half. Lamar Jackson, 52. Jalen Hurts, 51. Kyler Murray, 46. Deshaun Watson, 46, Kirk Cousins at 45, Patrick Mahomes, 45, Josh Allen, 43, Matthew Stafford at 40. A good example here of what can happen is, of course, the Dallas Cowboys, where during Dak's rookie contract, bolstered up the offensive line, had a really good running game, really good receivers, and an awesome defense. But since they started paying him a lot of money, they had to gut the roster a little bit. They became too Dak reliant, and in my opinion, They've gotten worse. Josh Allen, look at what the Bills did this offseason. They let go of so many marquee players. Why? Because that contract extension for Josh Allen, making him one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL, is starting to set in this year. But there is flexibility. There is maneuverability here where you can backload these deals so that Purdy next year will be the final year of his deal. And then let's say that real money starts to come in three, four years down the line, you can still pay players top dollar in the meantime until that contract really starts to set in. The issue once Purdy's average annual value starts to hit the salary cap, is he going to be able to carry the boats? Is he going to be able to shoulder the load and put this team on his back and make everybody better like a Patrick Mahomes? And Patrick Mahomes and that Chiefs offense this past year was not good. They started to finally find a groove in the NFL playoffs, but he didn't have really good wide receiver talent. Rasheed Rice was his number one. Of course, he had Travis Kelsey, but that's the reality of when you pay these quarterbacks a lot of money is that once that contract starts to come into play, you're unable to really have a roster as deep and as loaded as what the Niners have right now. And you're seeing that with the Dallas Cowboys. So of course that's a concern, but I have more confidence in this front office. I have more confidence in this coaching staff. I have more confidence in Jed York as compared to Jerry Jones up and down. Niners are a better run organization, a better roster and a better coaching staff than Dallas. 